One of the largest severe weather events of 2024 is coming to the United States, and that'll be happening both today and tomorrow, anywhere from the Great Plains back into the Midwest and even parts of the Ohio Valley, where 15 states are included in a risk for severe weather either today or tomorrow, and that is th for the threat of damaging winds, large to very large hail, and several tornadoes where even a few strong and or intense tornadoes will be possible. So in today's forecast, we'll be breaking down everything that you need to know about this upcoming storm and if there will be a tornado outbreak either today or tomorrow. But let's begin with what's going to be happening today in terms of that severe weather risk. And the Storm Prediction Center does have an enhanced risk for severe weather outlined. This includes areas like northwest Missouri, southwest Iowa, southeast Nebraska, and northeast Kansas. And this is where the greatest risk for severe weather will be. This is a three out of five on the severe weather scale. So it's a medium risk overall for today. And this is the area that will be watching for the greatest concern for very large hail and even a few tornadoes, which strong tornadoes cannot be ruled out. And outside of that enhanced risk, there's also a large marginal and slight risk that go all the way back down into Texas. So overall, it's a large area that's going to be impacted by at least some level of severe weather today. But overall, it's going to be much more isolated in the marginal and slight risks that are currently issued by the Storm Prediction Center. So the main concern for today will be large to very large hail this afternoon across Iowa. Iowa back into Texas, where there will be storms developing during the early to mid-afternoon hours, and that is where some discrete cells will form, and those discrete supercells will have the greatest chance of producing some significant hail. We could see hailstones as high as baseball-sized hail, so definitely make sure that you're protecting your vehicle and protecting any sort of outdoor plants. The damaging wind threat is a bit on the lower side, but it definitely still exists. Make sure that you're hatching down trampolines, as we do have a medium risk today for flying trampolines. In terms of the tornado risk, there is a hatched area, as I mentioned a moment ago, across four states, which is, again, Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, and as well as back into Missouri. That is where we have the chance for a couple strong tornadoes in this particular environment during the mid to late afternoon and as well as into the early evening tonight. We'll likely be live here on this channel, so make sure that you are subscribed down below and click the bell icon so you're notified if and when we go live. There is also a tornado risk back down into Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, and southern Missouri. This one remains remains a little bit more questionable overall. I think there will be at least a couple of tornadoes, but it's going to be a much lower threat overall the further south you go from that hatched area. With that being said, make sure that you do have a tornado action plan in place and multiple ways to receive alerts. We'll be going over the timing for this here in just a moment. There are timestamps in the description below so you can skip ahead to that, but you might not want to skip ahead to that because we are going to be talking about an even greater risk for severe weather as we go into Saturday. Now, I know the risk levels are pretty much the same and identical, but the area that is covered is a lot larger, and I would not be shocked if we got a moderate risk for severe weather somewhere inside of this enhanced risk in the afternoon update when they issue a new Storm Prediction Center update. Right now, there is a large enhanced risk for Saturday from North Texas back into Southwest Iowa. It is a large area where there is going to be a potential for a tornado outbreak. Now, there are scenarios that are showing that this could be a major problem. There are also scenarios that are showing that this could be a relatively low risk risk for severe weather. There is a very high ceiling to this event where we could have a significant tornado outbreak. There's also a low floor, which means that we might only have a few severe storms with damaging winds, large hail, and maybe a couple of tornadoes, basically. So overall, there's a very high ceiling, a very low floor, but I definitely want to make sure that you are weather aware for Saturday, because this will definitely be the greatest concern overall, because all the ingredients will be there. It's going to matter a lot, though, on what happens during the morning, and if all the ingredients are ready during the afternoon and evening for convection development. We'll be talking about this here in just a few minutes in terms of the future radar and give you an idea of what I'm talking about here. But overall, the greatest concern is from Iowa back through North Texas. And then there's also a slight risk from Michigan back into Texas, a very large area here. And the reason why is because we'll have a low pressure system here and then a second low pressure system back here. And this one's going to be producing the threat for a tornado outbreak. And then the other one's producing more of a marginal threat for severe weather. And this is actually the storm that we are dealing with today. So pretty interesting stuff there. There. What is fascinating is that both of those storms will be producing severe weather on the same day. So really interesting stuff there. Now the large hail concern is really going to be the greatest threat and with, with how large this area is, I wouldn't even be surprised if we had a moderate risk for large hail if that gets issued in the next outlook. Even then though, we are still talking about the potential for some scattered to numerous large to very large hail. It could go as high as three to four inches in diameter with an isolated storm or two. So definitely make sure you're protecting your vehicle. The damaging wind risk overall 
is on a bit of a lower spectrum from the hail risk, but there will definitely be some damaging winds between 60 to 75 miles per hour, especially in this red shaded area, which represents a 30% chance of damaging winds within a 25 mile radius. And then the tornado risk is overall definitely concerning, mainly because one, it's covering a very large area, and two, there are a lot of people that live in this area, and even three, we have the potential for strong and even intense tornadoes. And what I mean by that, an intense tornado by definition will be an EF3 plus tornado. That cannot be ruled out tomorrow if the environment does basically materialize as forecasted. So definitely make sure that you're staying weather aware. I'm not trying to say this to scare you, but I'm just giving you an idea of the magnitude of this potential event tomorrow. If everything goes as forecasted, this could be rather significant. But again, there's a high ceiling and a low floor. So things could definitely change here over the next 24 hours. There could be, again, a higher risk for tornadoes somewhere in here, but that still remains uncertain. We do have a low risk that goes all the way back into Michigan and as well as back into South Texas. Overall, not super concerned about areas back out here to the east. It's going to be a low risk. And then back over here, again, would be your main concern for tornadoes. Now let's talk more about the severe weather timing across the Midwest, and then we'll talk about areas that are further back west and as well as further down to the south. Before the rest of this morning, there will be convection across much of Iowa, Illinois, and as well as Missouri. Most of this is not going to be severe, but damaging winds will be a possibility with the most significant storms, and even then, it's a relatively low risk overall. Once we get closer to lunchtime, storms will begin to fire up near that low pressure system, which will be back over in Nebraska and South Dakota. This will eventually allow for maybe an isolated tornado risk to try to materialize during the early afternoon hours, but it really ramps up as we get closer to 3 to 4 o'clock, and it's going to be right in this area here, which is going to stretch from southeast Kansas all the way back up into western Iowa and as well as eastern Nebraska, where there will be a chance for a few tornadoes, and even a couple of those tornadoes could be on the strong side of things, and I'm not ruling out an intense tornado with one of these storms. Once we get closer to 5 to 6 o'clock, these storms are moving across areas in western and southwestern Iowa, northwest Missouri, and back into western and southwestern Missouri, where there will be a few of these storms that are discrete, and any discrete cells will have an elevated chance for a strong tornado. Once we get closer to 7 o'clock or so, those storms are moving through Des Moines and into northern parts of Missouri. Any discrete supercells will probably weaken for the most part after sunset, so daylight heating is going to play a factor today. Once we get closer to 9 to 10 o'clock, those storms are moving through eastern Iowa, and eventually by 11 to 12 o'clock, all that storm activity weakens out, and eventually by Saturday morning, we will begin to have our new setup developed for Saturday, which we'll talk about here in just a moment. Then for the Ohio Valley, including areas like Missouri and Arkansas, back near the lower Mississippi Valley, once again, there will be morning convection. Many of these storms will still produce some isolated damaging winds and maybe a brief tornado throughout the rest of the morning. By the afternoon, that convection will continue, and that should at least limit a lot of the storm activity from developing across southern Missouri and Arkansas until late today. And if this continues, there will be a lot of sinking air, which overall means that storms are going to be a bit more unlikely. But we are going to have an air mass that recovers very quickly, meaning we could get a couple of discrete cells right down here in northeast parts of Oklahoma and southeast Kansas. I would not rule out that they add a small 10% hatched area for tornadoes this far down to the south as well. We might have a couple of different areas similar to what we had yesterday with the two enhanced risks. Once we go into late Saturday evening around 6, 7, 8 o'clock, those storms move northeast. Overall, they kind of weaken due to all that morning and afternoon convection. There will be some strong to severe storms across Arkansas that are clustered together. All of that storm activity will be mainly damaging winds. And then once we go late into the evening, those storms move east and northeast. And if this convection is able to clear out fast enough this afternoon, we will probably at least get a few discrete cells that try to make an approach into southern Missouri with a strong tornado threat. But the problem will most likely be that this convection will kind of hang around. And if it does that, we're not really going to see much of a strong tornado risk down here. It would be more of an isolated hail and wind threat with maybe an isolated tornado. So that's going to be something that we'll have to monitor throughout the afternoon today. And then once we go into tomorrow, we are likely going to have a very favorable environment for a tornado outbreak. Now, I do want to mention that there is still some uncertainty with this, but the Storm Prediction Center has already issued a very large area, as I mentioned before, for that tornado risk. So we could end up getting a moderate risk for tornadoes, but as of right now, it is still an enhanced risk. There are very high tornado parameter values, though, which does represent that we do have a lot of shear in the environment. We have a lot of instability, but I do think there are a couple 
couple of problems with tomorrow's severe weather setup, and I'll show you that here on the future radar. So once we go into the morning hours, things remain really dry, which overall would basically increase the threat for severe weather, which basically means that we're not going to have a whole lot of storm activity. That means the atmosphere will be able to destabilize across Kansas and a lot of Oklahoma. But watch this little convection in the morning closely, because this could play around with things if it develops. It would actually lower the tornado risk overall if that does happen, because what would end up happening is essentially we would get a bunch of random convection across Oklahoma and as well as Kansas, and that could lead to a more premature tornado threat not really being maximized near that dry line, which will set up back out here to the west, our warm frontal boundary, which will be approximately here around 4 or 5 o'clock. Overall, we'd be looking at two different areas really for the greatest tornado threat, one of which would be near that warm frontal boundary and the other of which would be near the dry line. But if that premature convection happens tomorrow morning, that could really hinder the overall potential for a tornado outbreak and it might actually lower it overall. So obviously make sure you're subscribed to the channel, click the bell icon down below and we'll keep you posted with the latest as we get closer to tomorrow and we'll also be live today and tomorrow more than likely so make sure that you are subscribed to the channel.